Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, October 6th, 2023. And today is National Plus Size Friendly Day. This is my day. I'm definitely plus size, so happy plus size, friendly day, and um, leave it at that. Uh, yesterday on the on the broadcast, we had talked about holding fast to your faith, about not throwing it away, and we were looking in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, where the writer says, cast not away your faith. And it made me think, after we did that episode, it made me think about why people would throw away, why people would cast out their faith. And I'm sure that there's a lot of reasons out there. But the one reason that I want to talk about for just a second today is probably one of the biggest reasons many people are so confused and many people are leaving the church today it's because of false teachers you know we live in a world today where everybody has a a cell phone or two and everybody uses their camera phone and and people profess to be teachers bible teachers and are teaching false things and false doctrines and people fall into these things and end up trading the truth for a lie And that wasn't just a problem in our time today. You know, I know Apostle Paul and them in the the Bible didn't have things like Facebook and TikTok. But it was a problem. And in in Paul's letter to the church at Galatia, we we call it Galatians, chapter number one, verses six and seven says this. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So for this church at Galatia, Paul had found out that they were falling victim to false teachings. And... That was one thing. I mean, you you read this letter. I'm not going to read the entire book of Galatians to you. But I'm going to highlight just a couple of verses. And I encourage you, as we go into this weekend, spend some time in this book. And see how Paul is talking and how Paul is dealing with false teachings and false teachers. And he's, he's challenging this church today. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And Paul is shocked by that. He's, he's, he remembers their faith, how they, they founded their faith on Paul's teachings. And, and he uh, is amazed that they are so soon falling away from Paul's teaching onto this other gospel. That that people were trying to teach them, and people were trying to infiltrate into them. And you could argue and say, well, they didn't have a strong enough faith to, to stand up to that false teaching. And you may be right about that. Because it takes a, a strong faith to be able to recognize false teaching from true teaching. But this church was fooled. And this church fell victim. And if we go over to chapter 3, well, let's not go there yet. But Paul says he's marveled that they are so soon removed. Then he's talking about this other gospel, he says, which is not another. There is no other gospel. There is one gospel. There's one gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's it. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And if you're listening to a teacher on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube, or anywhere else, 
that's telling you that there's other ways to heaven besides Jesus, then you need to turn that person off because it's false teaching. It's not another, he said, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel. If we jump over to chapter 3, and look here at verses 1 and 2, he says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. In verse 2, This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? This is verse 3. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be in vain, I want to stop right there. I can keep going, but I want to stop right there. Paul again is challenging them. He says, oh, foolish Galatians. He said, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? They heard the truth from Paul. Their faith was founded in that truth. Now somebody has come and challenging that truth, changing that truth, and they're falling victim to, to that. They're falling victim to every wind of doctrine that's out there, it seems like. And there's so many of us that is, is the exact same way today. We fall victim to whatever teaching you hear. And we can't do that. We, we, and I, I've said this millions of times over the years that I've been doing online ministry. I said, just because somebody looks the part of being a Christian and being a pastor doesn't mean they are. Just because they wear that nice three-piece suit, got their hair slicked back, carry around a 50 pound bible and can quote quote 150 bible verses doesn't mean that person even knows who god is that's why jesus told us in matthew chapter 7 that we need to test the spirits we need to test them the apostle john in his letters of first second and third john challenges us to test the spirits but yet so often we just take what somebody says for granted and say, well, that must be the truth and I'm going to go follow that truth. And we end up getting pulled away from the, from the truth into this false gospel. It was a problem in Paul's time and it's a problem today that people are, are, that people are trying to change the way to get to heaven so that it suits them and it suits their needs and it suits their wants so that they can go on and live the life they want and still get to heaven that's what they think but that's not the way it works paul says in verse 2 this only what i learn of you received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith paul saying did you receive the spirit of god by, by the works of the law, by fulfilling the law of God, or did you receive it by faith? And we receive the Spirit by faith, by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the way it's been. That's the way it's always been. And if there was any possible way that we could earn our salvation by keeping the law, then Jesus had died in vain and he didn't need to. It reminds me of the story of the rich young ruler there in the Gospel, I think it's in the Gospel of Luke. I've talked about it several times, but here is this, this young man who had great wealth and came to Jesus and said, what do I got to do to get eternal life? And Jesus responds to him and says, well, you know, you know, the, 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 the commandments, you know, honor your father, your mother. And he quotes different commandments and, and the young man says, well, all those things have I kept. And Jesus said, you lack one thing He says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. And that man walked away. He thought maybe he could buy a seat in heaven. He thought maybe his possessions or his status would get him there. Friends, it doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. When you stand before God, if you don't, don't have the blood of Jesus covering your sins, if your name isn't written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to get in. 
It's not like walking into a restaurant where you have a reservation and you say, Snyder, part of you too, and he's going to let you in and say, oh, well, welcome, welcome, here's your reward. No, it's not the way it works. Verse number three of Galatians chapter three, he says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? He said, you started your, your life in the spirit through your faith, are you now made perfect by your flesh? By your your by by your man, by by I'm trying to think of the word I want to use there. Are you made perfect by your own works? He says, Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He said you suffered so many things for the gospel, and now you're gonna follow this false teaching. And now you're going to turn your back on the truth. And now you're going to cast away your faith. Friends, don't think it can't happen to you. Because it can. Friends, pray and, and ask God to help you see false teachings for what they are. To help protect you from falling into false teachings. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. Then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Mr. Johnson, let me explain this again. Your mortgage is $1,000. And I sent you two $500 bills. That was monopoly money. Just like the 1000 bongo burger bucks you sent last month, they're not worth anything. Excuse me, but you can buy one fry and get another free. Mr. Johnson, we only accept real money. Monopoly money, bongo bucks, dollar bills, they're all the same. Come on, they all have dollar signs on them. They may all claim to be a form of payment, but only one of them has value here. That is so narrow. You know, if everyone was just a little more open to different forms of payment, we would all be a lot richer. The truth is, you need to use real money or you will lose your home. There comes a point in life when we have to deal with reality. Believing what you want to believe about God may feel good during your lifetime, but in the end, only truth will matter. Make sure what you believe is true. Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com.